from startdataengineering.com. In this video, I'd like to talk about what staging area is and why it's beneficial to have a staging area in your data pipelines. As always, if you'd like to follow, this is the blog format. I'll leave the link in the description below. So let's get started. So what is a staging area? A staging area is a general concept and it refers to storing raw data that you have extracted from your source systems in your data pipelines. So it can, it can be using any storage system such as AWS S3, it can be a staging table on your database, etc. The general concept is you pull data from your source system and you store it in the raw format in some storage system. Let's look at a simple ETL ELT example. Um, let's assume this data pipeline runs every day and we have three data sources. The first one being a data vendor who is providing us data every day. And then we have a web scraping service, which is pulling data in, down every day. And then a application database from which we pull data every day. And we do some custom transformation. It can be Spark or Python or just a standard SQL. We load it into some clean tables and then we denormalize the data. It's a pretty standard uh, data pipeline. So you might be wondering why we need staging area in such a scenario. You might be wondering what's the purpose of keeping all these data uh, over time because we don't really use them. We only use the latest ones and then we kind of don't use those old raw information. So let's look at a few cases where having a staging area might be beneficial. So case one, if you want to reprocess the data in case of uh, an issue with, the, with your code or just with the logic itself, you can easily do that without having to depend on the source system. A general rule of thumb is in your data pipelines, once you pull data from your source system, the data might have changed. So storing data by day or whatever frequency you run your data pipeline on enables you to run your data pipeline again in case something goes wrong. This is a very common scenario where some logic changes and you will have to reprocess historical data um, this process, the process of doing this is also called backfilling or backfills. The second point being, if you want to track an error or debug a source of error, you can easily track it to the raw data. If you have raw data in your staging area versus if your raw data is somewhere in an external system. And <clears throat> the third reason is similar to the backfill scenario where a business user notices some change or wants the definition of a column to be changed and they want it applied um, three months historically, you can easily do that if you have a staging area. But if you don't have a staging area, you might have to depend on your external data source system to pull that data down all over again. So let's look at some common scenarios where having the staging area can save you a lot of trouble. Let's assume you have a data vendor and then five years down the line, they say they had made a mistake sometime in the past for 2015 0830 day. So they re-deliver the data and all you will have to do is run this block numbered one and reprocess the data in this denorm data, um, denormalized table. And similarly, if you are do running a web scraping service, and you notice that you had made an error in the transformation script here, all you will have to do is point to a earlier scraped data and rerun this block two, followed by recreating, excuse me, followed by recreating this denormalized data for, based on the date. In this scenario, it's very helpful to have the staging area because if you did not have the staging area, you potentially have lost data. So what I mean by that is today, which according to this data is 2020 9 one, you, you can run this web scraper again and pull down some data, but you cannot be certain that the website data has not changed or the website might have like blocked your scraper or rate limited your scraper or something like that. And finally, um, with your application database, it's really tricky because if you want to reprocess data, it is almost impossible to get data 
from a past point in time. You can argue that you can do that using uh, backups, but that's a tedious process. But if you had all the historical data stored in a staging location, all you will have to do is run block three, followed by recreating the norm data for that particular date. So that's why we use uh, staging area. The cost associated with staging area is typically low, especially if you're storing it in S3. Uh, the it's pretty minimal compared to the cost of engineering effort that it would take in case of an error or wanting to reprocess your data. And companies in general store uh, data at the staging area for three to five years, depending on their use case. And then they are moved to a archive data system um, service such as like AWS Glacier or something like that. So I hope this video gives you a good idea of what staging area is and what the benefits of having a staging area are. If you like this video and if you learned something from it, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. It really helps me out a lot. And I'll see you all next time. Thank you.